Welcome back to the gym, guys. So today we've got a, a longer piece, as has been the pattern for our Tuesdays lately. This piece will not be long if you don't do it right, though, so listen up. So a few time targets. First off, the overall workout time target is 18 to 25 minutes, okay? A couple things will make that shorter and incorrectly shorter. First and foremost, the very first movement of the workout, a 400 meter farmer's walk is going to be actually at a walking pace today. A little later in the week, we have a dumbbell run. Sometimes on our farmer's walks, they're like a fast jog. This should be a walk, okay? This should take four to five minutes to get through, especially depending on how heavy you're going or how challenging you make it, whether it's bear crawl, sorry, bear, bear hug, farmer's walk, searcher, whatever. I want it to be challenging enough, first and foremost, just to repeat, to beat a dead horse, you are going to be walking. But because you're walking, you're going to be a lot more, you're going to have a lot more time under tension. You're going to be holding on to those dumbbells or objects a lot longer. So you should have to put these down at least a couple of times, okay? So four to five minutes on that. That's what it should be taking. And that'll happen if you do a true walking piece, okay? Things we want to think about, as always. Shoulder position, torso position. We want to see that nice shoulder down and back position. Everything is nice and uh, straight up, straight down. Our head is straight forward. And then we're keeping soft, relatively soft knees on the farmer's walks, okay? We're not gonna take a big stride like so, reach out there, because look what happens. When I do that, then I lean forward. You want to stay as upright as possible the whole time. Okay, so that's farmer's one. Really important to get the effect, the training effect that we're looking for, you keep it at a walking pace, okay? Second movement, double unders. Uh, you guys know the deal on that. It's 150 of them. That's gonna take two to three minutes depending on how, how good you are at double unders. I would say around three minutes. If you're looking for subs, you can either do, we're gonna say 225 singles if you have a rope, or you can just do uh, two and a half minutes of practice of double unders. Those are great ones because they're very close to the actual double under itself. To get a little farther away from the double under, but still good movements, we could do, find a line hop and we could do 150 of those. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, etc. So that you're still getting the total number of jumps in. You can also go over and back dumbbell hop. Okay, over and back dumbbell hop. We would do 75 of those to match the number of jumps. So one, two, etc. Okay, so those are your best options there. You can always do jumping jacks as well, whatever. Those are 150. That brings us to lateral step over. This one is gonna be, it's 100 as written. There's gonna be a case where it's gonna be 200. I'll explain that in a second. These are lateral step overs, so we wanna stay sideways to the box the whole time. We shouldn't see this. Okay, we're going to be here. I should be facing the camera the whole time. You can either do a crossover step. You can match your feet together and then step down. The rep is finished when you come onto the other side. Okay, here's an exception. So that's 100 of those. And those should also take around four minutes, assuming that the box is high enough. If you're doing lateral step overs over a band or a high object, but not something that you put your feet over, so it looks like that, you're gonna do 200 of those, okay? So that'd be three, four, etc. okay? So that number's gonna be a little bit bigger because the cycle time is so much quicker. All right, and that brings us to our last movement, the tuck up, okay? It is a tuck up today because of the large numbers. This movement, more than any other, will require a really strong pacing strategy and a breakup plan. I like to take a couple big swings off the top so maybe go for, I don't know, whatever big is for you, I don't know, 10, 10 to 15 tuck-ups, but leave a couple of reps in the tank and don't be attached to that one number at the expense of tiring yourself out. So maybe let's say a couple sets of 10 to get you to 20, and you know that when you did those sets of 10, you had at least 12 reps in you, and then from that point forward, three to five reps, resting as little as possible, and then getting right back on it. That's why I'm saying three, because if you rest just a second and then you can get another set of three, that's better than wasting five seconds and getting five, okay? You're gonna get a lot uh, more done in a quicker, a shorter amount of time 
if you take that little rest strategy. That, this part is a slog, guys. It's about chipping away. Good technique. Let's go over that good technique. Uh, so you're going to be down here, down on the floor, hollow position at the start, come up, light back into it. What I like to see is folks going all the way straight with their legs before starting the next one. Sometimes we'll see this. That's not going to be as beneficial for you as like that. That's going to help develop you much better in terms of some of the other movements that we do. Subs, you guys, if you guys are masochists, you can scale it up. If 100 tuck ups is too easy, you can go 100 V ups. Uh, you can do uh, 100 ab mat sit ups. You could do 100 anchored sit ups. Something along those lines, okay, where you're actually performing that shortening of the body where we're crunching in like that, okay? All right, guys, so 18 to 25. Don't turn that walk into a run or even a slow jog. Do yourself a sir, uh, do yourself a favor and get the right time target by keeping it in actual walk. All right, guys, see you soon. Out.